Welcome back to Plowman's Backyard. Today we are going to be talking about hydrophobic soil. And if you have never heard what that is or how to fix hydrophobic soil, you are about to find out. So stick around. So the first thing I guess to talk about with hydrophobic soil is if you have never experienced, you'll know right away what it is. Basically within a bag, if you buy a bag at a store, and I did buy the good soil that I do recommend, and I still ended up with hydrophobic soil. So basically what it is, is it can be compacted. So when you get your bag of soil, it could be hard as a rock and you've got to really dig at it just to break up the soil enough to use it. Another thing is, is the dust that comes from it. There's big, whew, that is another sign of hydrophobic soil. So basically when you go to plant with it, um, it will, the water will sit on the top of the surface of your, of the soil and it won't actually go through. It'll just kind of puddle on top and sit there. Those are all signs that you are working with hydrophobic soil and it is very difficult to work with. And basically what's happening is that the soil is repelling the water. For one, it is the fact that the, all of the microorganisms and the fungi and the bacteria have all died in the soil. So it, it could be that the soil is very old or that it has been dry too long so that it hasn't had the moisture that it needs. And there is ways of correcting this. It does take um, a little bit of patience and work and also a little bit of expense of getting those uh, microorganisms and the organic matter back into the soil. So if you have it, it doesn't mean um, that you can't work with the soil. You just have to add the right amendments back into that soil so that it's usable. Personally, I don't like working with it at all. And if I have a bag and if I have a receipt, I do try to return it. Um, this time around though, um, that didn't happen. Uh, I thought I'd use this as an opportunity to show you exactly what I do to recreate that microorganism and um, organic matter back into the soil so that it is usable. Now, if you do use this and you're thinking that you can just add water to it and start using it, um, you're wrong. So basically you can just sit there and keep rehydrating the soil and, until it gets wet. And you will actually see the water go from up here sitting and it will just pour out like a tap almost. And you may think, well, hey, you know what? It's working, it's taking time, but it's watering my plant that's wrong. What is happening is that the water is going through the soil, not even touching the roots of your plant and coming out the bottom. So if you do have hydrophobic soil, you do really need to add in those um, organic matter and fungi and bacteria back into the soil so it can reabsorb the water properly and hold on to the water so that it can actually feed your plants and the, the, um, the root system. Those are the first steps of knowing when you have hydrophobic soil and basically what you're working with. So I have my empty pot here and I'm just going to display what hydrophobic soil looks like. So basically I'm adding in this dyed dry and dusty soil. And I did get it in the spring from the store, but it could have still been old. It could have been last year's stock. It's hard to tell. So as you can see, it did puddle at the top there. Ooh, we don't want to over spill this. I'm going to pour some back in here. But basically what you're going to see is just huge puddling and huge amounts of water just sitting there. And soil shouldn't do that. And as you can see, even though I've added water twice, there is still a lot of dry areas that are still quite dusty. Some of it did get wet, but not all of it. Another thing I'm going to show you is the inside look even though the water as you can see went right through there's water here it went right through the bottom of the pot um, you can actually put your finger down in there and it's still very very dry so just because you're adding water to your soil and I'll show you just how dry it still is even though the water went through it it doesn't mean that it's actually going to um, give nutrients and water to your plants it just went right through and that is what I mean by hydrophobic soil. It is basically repelling the water and not allowing the water to get to the middle of the soil, the middle of your root system, and essentially your plants are not going to survive or do well. 
So now that we understand what's happening with the hydrophobic soil, we are going to see how we can correct this. And it is going to take time. It's not necessarily going to work right away, but it will do a little better because we don't need to have this dry soil after it's been wet still sitting in our pot because our plants aren't going to survive at all in that. So we're just going to go through, I'm going to show some of the organic matter that I do add to the hydrophobic soil to help it to rejuvenate and bring it back to life. So some of the first things, um, some of the organic matter that we do want to add back into the soil is one, if you have manure or compost, both work. If you have both, I would still use both. The next is you can add some Epsom salts, give some nutrients to your plants. The next is if you have vermiculite. Vermiculite is very good at absorbing water. And if you have some, just add a few scoops of that to that. Um, another thing is the calfos. I do have some here, so I will be adding some calfos as well. Any amendments that could help the, basically um, give life back to your soil is going to help with the water absorption. Um, I also have worm castings. Worm castings are a great benefit. It's also a type of compost. I'm going to be adding some of that. There's other things that you can add, fish emulsion, whatever you can think of. Um, even new soil, black earth, soil from your garden. Get in there and get mixing the soil up and just so that you're not wasting that bag if you're stuck with it. I tend to, when I buy soil, I get the big bags, three cubits or bigger. So um, you don't want to waste it. So um, there is nothing wrong with even adding um, like peat moss or anything like that. Whatever you have is going to add life back to your soil. I would be adding it. So I'm just going to add a few things here just to see if we can re get this um, soil to reabsorb water so that it's workable and usable. First, I'm going to add some calfos. Next, I'm going to add some worm castings. Next thing I'm going to add is I've got um, manure here. Um, it is cow manure. And I have another bag of a different type of soil with added uh, vermiculite. And basically, you're just going to want to mix all of this around still see that it's so very dusty. Compost. Now you don't want to add too much compost because it could make it, make it too wet. Or different type of soil with vermiculite in it. Calfos. You can also add a wetting agent if you have it. I don't have any on hand right now, but that is another thing that will really help. As you can see, it's not so dusty, it's getting there. As you can see, it's much darker looking. It's not so dry and dusty. So now that we have mixed up our soil, and again, it's good and fluffy and moist, I'm gonna add the soil to the pot again and just see if we, when we add the water, if it helps absorb the water better or not. So I don't know if you could see that, but it definitely absorbed the water much quicker and more evenly. It's dripping down, so that's a good sign. The real test is to see if the water had gotten through the center of the soil, and it did. You can see there, um, it's all quite wet. Now, it's a bit too wet. Um, so it's really working out a balance between your compost and your different bacteria. So what I would do is possibly add some more of um, the vermiculite and uh, peat moss, which I do have some here. And basically it's just learning the consistency. So I don't have like a direct recipe per se. I go by feel. Well, as you can see, we definitely fixed the um, hydrophobic soil condition and made it a little bit too wet. But play around with um, your amendments, play around with different things that you have. Even if you have to go out and purchase some new things or a wetting agent or getting even just some more uh, peat moss and things, play around with it. You can definitely bring back the life in your soil. Like I said, we went from too dry to too wet, but 
we do know that we can get to a balance. So I'm just gonna have to play around with that a little bit more. But I basically just showed you what you do need to do to kind of rehydrate your soil, bring back some of the life back into your, your soil. So just play around, find out what gives you a good consistency. So one, you don't want to have it too dry because it's not going to, it's just gonna repel the water. And two, if it's too wet, it can still actually really harm your plants and your root system. So finding that balance for yourself is what's going to work out and I'm just going to play around more here with what I have to get it to a good consistency. Again, hydrophobic soil is not something I like to play with. If I can return it, I will absolutely try my best to return it. Um, I couldn't do that with this so I thought I would use it as an opportunity to show you what you do when you have hydrophobic soil. Um, Again, there's nothing wrong with necessarily having it. It does take time. You do need to wet it, um, let it dry out a little bit more, and you do need to play around. It's a little bit finicky, but um, if you have it, don't be in despair. You can fix it. Also, adding it, some of it to your garden and um, is another way you can use it, utilize it without having to use it for necessarily starting your seeds indoors like I do. So adding it to an already good garden soil and just adding those extra little amendments in there can maybe help you use up some of the soil and not just waste your money. Um, I like, I think I added most of mine to my um, raised bed garden box with my lettuce. It's not gonna add nutrients to the soil, but if you needed to add soil, it could just use up some of that space to add more soil to it. But again, you do need to still amend it a bit. So if you have hydrophobic soil, I feel real bad for you, but it's not the end of the world. And um, just do these simple steps. Again, if you have other things to use, um, you don't necessarily have to use what I use, but just researching and finding out those different organic matters, uh, fungi, mycorrhizal would be really good to add to this. I don't have any on hand, but that's another really good fun, um, like fungal um, life to add to your soil. And don't be discouraged. This year wasn't a great success with starting my own seeds because I had this to work with and at the time it was playing around with the soil and getting it to be just right which as you can see it takes time and it's not going to happen right away but you did see that we were able to move it to a, at least start absorbing the water. Um, so again when I started my seeds even though I had the grow lights I had the right soil the right temperature I had the right seeds I, it still was a bit of a flop for that but I'm thankful um, some of the seeds did work out well and I did, was able to go out and purchase some of the plants which I don't normally do but it was still it was nice I had to do what I had to do and if you have to do that too there's nothing wrong with that um, but this working with this soil it's tricky um, if you feel like you know what this soil is not great and your plants are flopping don't feel bad because we all do it hey I've been gardening for years now and I still have years that flop so don't feel bad because it happens to everybody. So again, hey, if I can do the gardening thing, if I can bring this back to life, so can you. So remember to um, get gardening, get growing food for your family and enjoy the fresh um, eats right out of your garden and in your own backyard. Till next time, take care.